All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So in this one, I need to, unfortunately, ask the infuriating question, has Robert Sala lost the New York Jets locker room? That question is 100% justified, 100% realistic to ask at this point in time. 15 weeks through the 2023-2024 NFL season, and the Jets look completely lost and clueless. Right? And it pains me to say that. It pisses me off to say that. But it's the reality. It's objectively disappointing across the board. You look at this team, how much they talk from Joe Douglas, from Robert Sala, the mantras. It's it's all about the future. It's never about the present. It's only about the future. Uh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to build this. We're going to build that. Uh, it never gets done, right? It, it never gets done. The Jets, as we all know, lost yesterday a divisional rivalry game to the Miami Dolphins and not just lost. They got their doors blown off, losing 30 to zero. And look, I understand, hey, it's Zach Wilson out there, their backup quarterback. He gets banged up. Trevor Simeon has to go in. There's a million issues on the offensive line. Uh, you know, it, it's one problem after another. But you know what? Every team in the, this is, first of all, this is the National Football League. This is the best of the best. You need, as players, as fans, as coaches, you know, even the uh, you know positional coaches, you need to have belief in the people running the show, people running the organization, the figureheads, the general managers of the world, the head coaches of the world, the offensive and defensive coordinators, the play callers, the game planners. You need to have faith in these guys. It cannot be a guessing game from week to week. Oh, well, we tried this. We tried that. Uh, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, Saul had a comment yesterday in, uh, you know, the postgame presser. Sometimes you have a good game plan. Sometimes you don't. That does not sound, that does not sound like a top head coach to me. It doesn't. Will John, has John Harbaugh ever said something like that? Has Andy Reid ever said something like that? Has Bill Belichick ever said something like that? I mean, to me, like, if you read between the lines, that says... We don't really know what we're doing and we're guessing here. We are throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. If it works, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter because there's no accountability within the organization. You look at some, I mean, man, you you, you just look at the landscape across the NFL. Not even the NFL. Let's, let's look at the landscape of the AFC. This is like the year of the backup quarterback, right? Yeah, again, I understand the Jets are banged up. The Jets have their own issues. It's not ideal to have Aaron Rodgers go down four plays into the season. It's not ideal to have a a bunch of injuries on the offensive line and a continue to, to continuously roll out different starting groups. But you know what? Every team has to do it. The Colts are making it work. The, the young, rebuilding Colts rolling out a backup quarterback in Gardner Minshew, somebody that the Jets could have had this offseason, with a brand new rookie head coach in Shane Steichen. They're in the playoff picture. What is their excuse? They don't have any. They're making it work. What about the Cincinnati Bengals? They lose Joe Burrow, one of the best quarterbacks in football, right? A top three quarterback in the entire National Football League. He goes down. Jamar Chase is battling injury. They're, 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 you know, they're proactive in the in the QB search when Burrow's having issues at the start of the season. You know, uh, you know, obviously now as well, they figured out an option with Jake Browning. They figured out an option and they're, they're working through it. They're winning football games. Zach Taylor, this organization is, is well ran enough. They, they know who they are. They know how to attack teams. They have an identity. They have a short-term and long-term plan. So the Colts are making it work. They're not rolling out excuses. They're going out and winning games. The Bengals are doing the same damn thing. Well, what about the Cleveland Browns who have rolled through Deshaun Watson, DTR, PJ Walker, and now ex-Jet Joe Flacco, who, again, much like Gardner Minshew, was out there this entire time. He could have been had in the offseason. He could have been had midway through the season. I understand he's not the most mobile of quarterbacks out there. He's not 24 years old, looking like Kyler Murray or Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen. I understand that. You look at like Joe Flacco's immobility behind this Jets offensive line. It would probably be a nightmare, but again, we, we circle back to Joe Douglas not even trying. Maybe Joe Flacco would have worked, but we, we'll, we'll, we'll never have that clarity. We'll never have that answer 
because Douglas did not try. And I don't want to hear that Joe Flacco was denying the Jets and saying, no, I don't want to go to you guys. I'm down to play for any other team, but not you guys. Because he signed a practice squad deal with the Cleveland Browns as essentially their fourth option. So the Browns, we have, we, again, we have the Cleveland Browns, we have the Cincinnati Bengals, we have the Indianapolis Colts making it work with the backup quarterback. And then we have the Pittsburgh Steelers, who, yes, of course, they are rolling out a backup quarterback in Mitch Trubisky slash Mason Rudolph. But what's really, really cool, you know, from afar as an outsider looking in, you know, what's really cool about the Steelers organization and, you know, their 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 uh, format, their foundation, they were struggling with their starter in Kenny Pickett. They're still struggling with their backups, and yet they are still somehow in the mix to be, you know, uh, be a potential wild card, a wild card team. You know, so you know, if you want to talk about adversity, you know, it's one thing if Zach Wilson and you know your backup struggles, you know, you're having problems on the offensive line. It's a whole other issue. If your starting quarterback is struggling too, now you're in a huge, huge dilemma. Pittsburgh's figuring it out. Yeah, they've had some disappointing losses for sure. They're not perfect, but you know what? They're in the mix. The Jets are eliminated. So again, to kind of tie it all back to the start of the video here, has Robert Sala lost the locker room? Frankly, I don't, I don't know how you go on a five-game losing streak in the middle of the season, in crunch time. You don't get a win in the month of November. Are you kidding me? This is crunch time here. Five-game losing streak. Not to mention the win before the five-game losing streak was very, very un uninspiring coming out of a bye against the New York Giants where they barely skimped by uh, winning 13-10 to in overtime. But that's neither here nor there. You go on this five-game losing streak. You have a great, great win. You take steps in the right direction. Zach isn't you know, throwing a bunch of picks. The offensive line, it wasn't perfect, but they held up enough. Uh, the defense did their, you know, did their thing against Houston special teams, obviously. And you think you can build off of it, right? I mean, am I crazy to assume that the Jets, you know, could have, you know, looked at what they did against Houston and said, man, like we 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 tried some new stuff. Zach was taking care of the football. We were taking some shots down the field. We it really seemed like we were playing uh, on more of like the front foot, if you will, like more more aggressive as a staff, as you know, an offense. We were trying to push the envelope envelope a little bit. We weren't just settling for the quick little slip screens to Brees Hall. But yet we take steps backwards in Miami. And again, I, you know, I, I credit Miami, great football team. But, you know, here's another example of a team overcoming adversity, humiliating loss the other night against the Titans on prime time. You lose Tyree Kill. You lose Holland. You lose Xavier Howard. You lose Elliott. They're, they're having problems on their offensive line. Waddles in and out early. And they win 30-0. to zero. 30 to 0 is not a close competitive game, obviously. It's humiliating. It's disgraceful. And it's a slap in the face. You look at some of these comments that the players are making after the game. It's embarrassing. Alan Lazard, they out schemed us. They out efforted us. I mean, what are you like? Are you kidding me? Out schemed us. Direct shot at the coaches. Out effort us, <laughs> right? Like, like and it, going into the game, the Jets still, mathematically speaking, had a shot to make the playoffs. I mean, all week the Jets were hyping up the win against Houston, Texas size L, Aaron Rodgers coming back, this and that, this and that, and then you followed up with a thirty to zero loss, a thirty to zero loss to get eliminated from the playoffs, and it makes it worse that it's the division rival Miami Dolphins, coached by Mike McDaniel, who's on the same staff. In San Francisco is Robert Sala. Um, you know, things are not good. Again, Alan Lazard's comments. You have Garrett Wilson's comments, who sounded frustrated as hell when talking to Rich Samini. Uh, Samini of ESP, and quick shout out to uh, my buddy Paul uh, Boy Green for uh, the tweet here. Uh, he, uh, or Samini said from ESPN, you don't get targeted until I think the third quarter. And Garrett Wilson said, I'm aware. Like, you know, bluntly, Samini said, so that was my question. What's going through your mind as that's, you know, unfolding and you are not getting the football? And Garrett Wilson said, it seems like we are being unintentional, to be honest. That's kind of my mindset. I feel like that doesn't have to be the case. It was. I guess I got to fix it. 
I got to figure out how I can get involved in the first quarter, start practicing fast. I don't know. I got to show something. I got to do something. I don't know. Like I couldn't imagine being Garrett Wilson every single week. You're looking across the you know field at a capable offense, an offense that moves, an offense that gets their top wide receiver targets involved. You know, like yesterday, right? Miami, they, they don't even have Tyreek Hill out there. And then all of a sudden they have a great, great plan in place for Jalen Waddle, who again gets banged up in the game and then yet still manages to come back in and has a great game, right? That play, that play where, you know, he burned DJ Reed, he fell down. You know, if you're Wilson, you're like, man, I, I'm the number one option here. I, I, I'm not even getting targeted. What's that about? And I credit Wilson because he has all, all like, I mean, he if he wanted to, he could say, you know, he could throw some people under the bus, but he's not doing it. He's being the ultimate professional here uh, by, you know, just kind of looking inward, or at least having his responses looking inward. But, you know, it wasn't just Alan Lazard. It wasn't just Garrett Wilson. We can talk about Sauce Gardner, who was sounded extremely disappointed about uh, the Jets missing the playoffs and being eliminated once again. We can talk about DJ Reed's comments where he said, you know, I, I mean, it's hard to be honest. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, we're going to be motivated every week. Knowing we're not going to the playoffs is very tough. So as Jets fans here, you know, we've sat through some pretty excruciating football games this season, right? We've seen offensive line struggles. We've seen a lack of a run game. We've seen red zone struggles and third down struggles and coaching problems and a real, real sense of confusion that's what i get i mean I, we're 15 weeks into the nfl season and we have guys looking like again lost out there just not even knowing where to go to me that speaks to coaching and of course chemistry on field reps the offensive line is like makeshift every week it's constantly changing so the point is we've sat through some pretty hard games this season and you're looking at these comments you're looking at the guys on the sidelines you're seeing aaron Rodgers looking just pissed like he just wants to throw on a helmet and get out there and just lead the team back because nobody else can do it uh, the coaching staff isn't you know putting these guys in the right position to have success and uh you're just sitting there like hopeless as a fan like your hands are tied and then think back to last year where the Jets ended the season on a six game losing streak and once again got eliminated from the playoffs and then we were sold in the offseason well hold on it's next year, right? We, as fans, we gave Sala, we gave Joe Douglas, we gave Zach Wilson, we gave Mike LaFleur, everybody a pass year one. It's fine losing. Why? Because we're young, we, we're rebuilding, we have a rookie QB, we have a rookie head coach. Uh, Joe Douglas needs time to build the team. We're two and a half years beyond that. And here we are failing to get to 500 Joe Douglas, since he's been here, 2019, has failed to get to 500, spending endless amounts, millions upon millions of dollars on all these free agent acquisitions, <sighs> tons of first round picks all over the place. I mean, off the top of my head, AVT was a first round pick, Sauce Gardner, top 10 pick, Garrett Wilson, top 10 pick, Zach Wilson, second overall pick, Will McDonald, first rounder, Jermaine Johnson, first rounder, Mekhi Becton, first rounder. If you want to get technical with it, right, talking about first round picks that Joe Douglas, you know, didn't make, Quinton Williams was a top three, CJ Mosley, Lakin Tomlinson, Dwayne Brown, like the, there's, you know, here we are, here, I'm almost at a loss for words, man, uh, has Robert Sella lost the locker room? I'm really, really intrigued to hear your thoughts on it, looking at guys' faces on the sidelines, looking at the scoreboard, reading these comments. I just don't, I mean, let me, let me just end the video off with this question. Do you trust Robert Sala in a big game? Sorry, sorry. Do you trust this coaching staff in a big game? I'm talking playoffs, a cold weather game, away game in the playoffs. Like Rex Ryan going to Gillette and upsetting the Patriots. Like Mark Sanchez and the Jets, the young, uh, uh, young Mark Sanchez filled with a veteran team that Rex Ryan, those Schottenheimer years, beating Peyton Manning in the playoffs. Do the Jets have that potential? I feel like Sala and Hackett, when we just can start comparing apples to apples across the uh, rest of the AFC, chances are, right, it's the NFL, things happen, but chances are 
the favorite is going to the other coach. Let's quickly go through them. John Harbaugh. I I would feel more comfortable as a Ravens fan knowing I have John Harbaugh as opposed to Hackett and Sala running the show. Andy Reid. Do you trust Sala to go to Kansas City, go to Arrowhead in a playoff game and to knock off the Kansas City Chiefs? I don't know. I, I don't know if he can out-scheme Andy Reid. McDermott. I mean, Buffalo's on a roll. Buffalo has beaten the Jets their fair share of times. I, you know, if anything, it's even. Mike McDaniel. Obvious, Dolphins swept us this year. Jets clearly have no answers. Got blown out the first game, blown out the second game. Almost looked worse in the second matchup. I mean, who? Well, I, I didn't even mention Doug Peterson, who was a Super Bowl championship. I didn't mention Sean Payton, who was a Super Bowl championship. Mike Tomlin, I'm taking Tomlin. Zach Taylor, I'm taking Zach Taylor. Stefanski, I'm not 100% sold on Stefanski, but you know what? He's he's turned Cleveland around. That's a winning football team now. The Cleveland Browns that you know I watched growing up, not they're not they're not the same. And I think a large part of that is due to Kevin Stefanski. He might not have the upside as an Andy Reid and you know some of these guys, but a Mike McDaniel, but it, you know Nick Sirianni, a Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, but he can steady the ship. He really brought a lot of organization to that franchise, a lot of stability to the franchise. You, 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 I mean, how many coach do we? How many coaches do we just name right there? McDaniel, McDermott, Reed, Harbaugh, Tomlin, Stefanski, Taylor. Like how many? Like it's uh, and even like a Shane Sykin too, a, a D'Amico Ryan's. Like those guys are obviously super young and super unproven, but you know, I, I'm 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 impressed. I'm impressed with what those guys are doing this season. I mean, how many wins do those team? Uh, do those teams have seven, eight? I mean, we haven't even reached eight wins with Robert Sala yet. And he's been here for two and a half years. These guys are doing it in year one with young rebuilding football teams. So I, I think it's a fair question to ask. I don't think it's harsh. I don't think it's blunt. If it's year one, okay, it might be a little harsh. Year two, uh, getting there, but eh, it's year two. This is year three, man. This is year three. And to lose 30 to zero to a division rival... After talking it up throughout the week, talking it up, talking it up. <sighs> Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.